There's a short phrase in today's gospel that I would invite us to hang on to as we reflect upon God's word this weekend, and it is the phrase, on the way. We're always on the way. We're on the way here, we're on the way there, we're on the way because, of course, our life is this journey that is leading us from one place to the next, from one moment to the next, from one person to the next, and on the way, you and I have a basic human need. And one of those basic human needs, of course, besides food, clothing, and shelter, and air, is that we have the basic need, the human need, to belong. It's important for us to belong, to belong to a family, to belong to a community, to belong to a church like we do here. Why? It's important for us to belong to something that reminds us of the fact that there's something greater than ourselves that we are a part of, that we are able to participate in that we can be formed and fashioned by so that we become the people that God has called us to be while on the way. It's good to belong. So imagine for a moment these 12 disciples. Imagine their feelings. Imagine their excitement. Imagine how proud they are of themselves. After all, they belong to the Twelve. They belong to this group. They belong to those chosen. Not just by a man, but by the Son of Man, by, by the Messiah, by the Chosen One. Now, if you were and I were part of that Twelve, wouldn't we be incredibly proud? Wouldn't we be excited to the fact that Jesus chose us? We were one of the twelve to be chosen to be part of this group, this group that would follow him, this group that would assist him, this group that would be able to witness what it is that he's saying and what it is that he's doing and why we would be part of that inner circle. How good it is to belong. But to belong to that group, why that's better than good. That's like phenomenal. I'm trying to imagine the Jerusalem equivalent of a chest bump or a fist bump like we have and like we see our football players doing on our televisions these days now that the football season has returned. Why, can you imagine the 12 doing that little chest bump? After all, they belong. They belong to a group. They belong as one of the disciples. So can we blame them? Can we blame them for wanting to have a conversation about who is the greatest? After all, to belong to a team, to belong to anything means that, well, it means that we just don't want to just belong, but we want to be great at what it is that we belong to. I don't know of a single football player that, why, they not only want to belong to the team, but they want to be the greatest football player ever. Why, I would guess that even people who make their living as a baker, why, they want to be able to bake the best loaf of bread ever. Who doesn't in this church here tonight, of you and I, which of us doesn't want to do great, even in the small things that are part of our everyday life? So why not talk about greatness? Why not celebrate it? Why not, why... Why not be in that line to have that conversation around it? Well, keep in mind, of course, that Jesus is not saying to you and I that we shouldn't strive for the greatness that indeed provides us that opportunity to be of service, to be of that which we are able to excel at what it is that we do and who we do it for. 
But Jesus wants the disciples and you and I to remind ourselves when we have that conversation around greatness, when we start to think of ourselves as really, really important, and as we start to think of ourselves as, well, really great. He wants you and I to be reminded of what greatness means, what it looks like, and what it entails. For Jesus did great things. Jesus exemplified greatness by the manner and the way in which he lived our li his life. And what's truly amazing is that greatness then is found in today's gospel in a little child as Jesus wraps his arms around this child and brings them into the midst of the disciples. There he gives them an example of greatness. But why a child? Why not, why not like a leper? Why not somebody else? Why did Jesus choose a child to get across his point of greatness. Certainly, children didn't have many rights and their status in society was incredibly low in the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe that's why, but I would contend, my friends, for you and I to look a little bit deeper because therein, I think, finds for us the lesson of what it means to be great, and that is we have to discover our leastness. And children have a way of teaching us that. Because children haven't had all those years of experience to put on layers and to put on masks, one mask after another. The beautiful thing about children is what you see is what you get, oftentimes to the embarrassment of their parents. But it's true. Children haven't had that opportunity to put on all these different masks, to put on all these different layers, to provide a certain image, if you will, out into the world like you and, adult, you and I as adults have had the occasion and the experience to do. And so today's Gospel of Greatness invites you and I to embrace our leastness. And the way in which we do that is we have to welcome that which is least in all of us. And what do we mean by that? This leastness, keep in mind there's no such word, but I'm making it one. This leastness, I believe, is getting down to the bare essentials. Getting down to the basics of who we really are. It's allowing ourselves the moments in this life to let go of those masks, to let go of those images that we somehow seem to think that we need to portray to others to be able to show our greatness, our accomplishments, our degrees, our titles, and all the like, but to be able to let go of that and to be able to discover that there, once we get down through the layers, once we are able to peel the onion back, which is our lives along the way, we begin to discover that the one identity that truly is great for you and I, and it never changes, is our core identity, our basic identity, God's sons and daughters, God's children, that Jesus welcomes into his midst. And he welcomes you and I into his midst today. And he welcomes you and I because, of course, in the midst of all of these masks that we've put on, Jesus sees deep down in the very depths of who we really are, and he rejoices in the identity that truly defines us by the manner in which we are to be defined, and that is that we are his beloved sons and daughters, and as a result of that, then we need to act that way, on the way, and the way in which we act that way is we strive to become like Christ by serving the needs of all, by being attentive to all, by recognizing that we need, we need to belong, to belong to a greater whole, and to recognize our role in participating in it so that we might find our greatness, not just our greatness, but the greatness of every human life, every human life, where is found God's beloved children.